Should you upgrade to a Wi-Fi 7 router when most of your devices are still using Wi-Fi 6? Well, we're gonna find out. Thanks to my friends at ASUS for sponsoring this video and for sending over the ASUS RTBE92 router, which has tri-band Wi-Fi 7. So I can finally answer the questions with a bunch of tests. Now, before I connect to this, let's start by running some tests using my current Wi-Fi 6 router. Wi-Fi 7 is all about that speed, but there are two types of speed. We have an internal network speed and we have an external internet speeds. We're gonna test both. Here I've got two laptops. This one has a Wi-Fi 6 network card and this one has a Wi-Fi 7 network card. Both are Core i9 processors and both have 32 gigs of RAM and both are connected to the Wi-Fi 6 router. Right, so the first test I'm gonna run is to copy a large file, this is 5.2 gigs, from my local C drive over to my NAS, my network attached storage. And we wanna see how long that's gonna take, and that's connected over my network. So I right click, I paste, and then we begin the timer. Now, of course, I'm speeding this up because nobody wants to watch the 1%, 2% thing going on. And then I'll show you all the results collected together at the end. So don't worry too much about the timing right now. And then it's done. So we've made a note of that Wi-Fi 6 laptop connected to a Wi-Fi 6 router. And we're going to repeat the exact same test with the exact same file, but this time on a Wi-Fi 7 laptop connected to the same Wi-Fi 6 router. So 5.2 gig file, copy that, and we're gonna paste that, and we're gonna start the timer. And once again, in full disclosure, before somebody adds me in the comments, this is measuring the actual time that it takes. I'm just fast forwarding this bit. We wanna see if it makes any difference if you use a Wi-Fi 6 network card or a Wi-Fi 7 network card. Right, we're still connected to the Wi-Fi 6 router, and the next test is we're gonna go external. Let's test the internet speed. Now, for the external test, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same 5.2 gig file and we're gonna drop it into Google Drive and of course, start the timer from the second that it starts uploading. And this is the Wi-Fi 6 laptop connecting to the Wi-Fi 6 router. And we wanna see if there's a difference going outside of your own network. Now, it's important to also note that this isn't a indicative of everybody's speed because your ISP, your internet service provider speed also plays a huge role here. Depending on your upload speed and your download speed, you're gonna get different results. Now, because I'm using the same service provider for both the Wi-Fi 6 and the Wi-Fi 7 laptops using the same Wi-Fi 6 router, which means we're comparing like with like. Okay, now that the upload has been done, the next thing is to delete the file on my local C drive. And of course, let's go do a download test. So right click on the file, click on download. It's gonna try scan it for viruses. I'm gonna choose save and start the timer. Until it's complete, the timer will continue to run. But we're just gonna keep an eye out on the file until it's completely downloaded and we're gonna stop the timer. Okay, that's done. Let's change our laptops and go to the Wi-Fi 7 laptop with a Wi-Fi 6 router, same router. The router hasn't changed, same test, same file, uploaded from my C drive to Google Drive, and we're timing it on the fast forwarding, but you got that already. All right, now that the upload is done, let's delete the local file so we see there's nothing in there, and let's go back to our Google Drive, right click, download, let's accept the download anyway, click on the save button, and the timer starts, and we're gonna stop it when it stops downloading. Now that we've seen how Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7 laptops react on the Wi-Fi 6 router, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test our phones. I'm gonna do two tests. I'm gonna do them with a Wi-Fi 6 phone and a Wi-Fi 7 phone close to the router, which is just behind these doors, and then one on the most furthest point in the house. Let's see what the speed difference are gonna be. So this is gonna be point number one, right outside these doors. The router is just on the other side. And the second point, well, let me show you. <laughs> Right over here. So the furthest point is about 100 or so feet, which is roughly about 30 meters. We're gonna call that the far point. And the one outside the office, well, that's the close point. All right, at the close point, Wi-Fi 6 phone connecting to a Wi-Fi 6 router. We're gonna run a Wi-Fi analyzer. 1,200 megabits per second is the link speed test. It's typically the speed between the phone and the router itself. 
Now let's do a speed test connecting to the Frontier network. And of course, I'm fast forwarding all this and the results will be at the end. Right, at the furthest point, Wi-Fi 6 phone connecting to a Wi-Fi 6 router, 612 megabits per second. We're gonna run the same speed test connecting to the Frontier network and I'll tell you the results at the end. But switching off to the Wi-Fi 7 phone connecting to the Wi-Fi 6 router. So I just wanna make sure we're comparing apples with apples the entire time. And as you can see, 2,268 megabits per second at the closest point. And let's fire off the speed test. Frontier Network is the, always the same server time and time again and get that result. Let's go to the furthest point in the house. Same phone, same Wi-Fi router. It's running the same test. Let's see what happens. Okay, tests on the Wi-Fi 6 router is now done. And now I'm going to switch over to the Wi-Fi 7 router to the RTBE92. And then I'm going to compare the results. Whilst this router is uh, still booting up, let's decipher some of those geeky terms that no normal human can actually understand. Now, Wi-Fi 7 is all about the speed. And imagine you are on a freeway with multiple lanes. Nice and fast, which is what you get with Wi-Fi 6. Now comes Wi-Fi 7, which not only adds more lanes, but also increases the speed limit. That means you're gonna go a heck of a lot faster. And that is what the geeks mean when they say Wi-Fi 7 has wider channels and higher frequency. Wi-Fi 7 has 320 megahertz channels in the six gigahertz band, whereas Wi-Fi 6 has 160 megahertz. You see how that now makes more sense? Now, sticking with our cars and traffic, let's imagine you're in a super fast car, you're flying down the freeway, and all of a sudden you notice a traffic congestion in the far left lane. What are you gonna do? You're gonna change lanes. Now imagine that your car also has a facility to take any of the free lanes on the highway that are not currently being used, combine them together so that you can zoom down the highway even faster. Now in Wi-Fi 7 terms, that is called multi-link operation, which is pretty cool. Do you know what's not cool? Is your car's headlights that are either in the on or off position. Now you can flash your headlights really quickly, but totally not in the cool category. Imagine your car not only being able to do that, but your car's headlights are able to change color and are able to increase or decrease the brightness level. That gives you infinitely more possibilities. That is what 4K QAM means. In Wi-Fi 7 terms, it means that Wi-Fi 7 packs more data into each transmission, which results in smoother streaming, reliability, improved performance, and faster speed, which let's be honest, it's all that we want. But the big question is, does it actually work? Or is it more marketing stuff trying to force us to buy more stuff that's gonna be cool in the future? Well, now that the Wi-Fi 7 router is up, the proof is in the pudding or whatever that saying goes. So let's go make some Wi-Fi pudding. Right, so Wi-Fi 6 laptop, but this time we're connecting to the Wi-Fi 7 router and exactly the same test as we've run before because you wanna compare apples with apples. So taking the same file, copying it from a local C drive and over to my NAS. And of course, again, I'm fast forwarding this bit, but don't worry, everything will be tallied at the end. Okay, so now that that file is copied, let's do the exact same thing, this time Wi-Fi 7 laptop with the Wi-Fi 7 router and the same test. Copy the file from my local C drive, going into my NAS, right clicking on that, and then pressing paste. And then of course, the timer kicks in the second that I press the paste button, and we're gonna let this thing fly through. And now the file is now on my NAS drive. So with the local test being done, let's move over to the external test. Right, Wi-Fi 6 laptop to Wi-Fi 7 router. We're gonna drag a file and drop it into the Google Drive. And we're gonna let this one run through. And of course, we're using the exact same file every single time. Again, I'm trying to compare apples with apples. And now that that is completed, let's delete the file on my local drive. Let's go and download the file from Google Drive back onto my C drive. And then we're gonna time that. So Wi-Fi 6 laptops connecting to a Wi-Fi 7 router what's that speed going to be like. Okay, that's done. Let's move on to the Wi-Fi 7 laptop with Wi-Fi 7 router. And we're gonna do the upload speed onto Google Drive. So we can take a reading of that speed. And the only thing that's left to do is now compare the 
download speed from Google Drive onto the laptop. And then once this test is done, we're going to have all the data so we can finally answer, is it worth upgrading to Wi-Fi 7 router today or is Wi-Fi 6 good enough? Okay, you know the drill by now, Wi-Fi 6 phone connecting to the Wi-Fi 7 router at that closest point, 1,134 megabits per second. At the closest point, let's fire up the speed test, same frontier network, let's run that test. Wi-Fi 6 phone connecting to a Wi-Fi 7 router. Okay, let's go to the furthest point. Wi-Fi 6 phone still connected to the Wi-Fi 7 router. Pretty looks like a pretty good connection. 680 megabits per second as far as that's concerned. And the speed test with the Frontier network, Frontier connection. Let's see what that's going to bring us. Okay, let's swap out the phone. Wi-Fi 7 phone connecting to the Wi-Fi 7 router at that closest point, 2,882 megabits per second. And then let's fire up the speedtest.net connecting to the Frontier server, same thing as before. Get that result. And let's go to the furthest point. Make sure we're still connected. Yes, we are. Wi-Fi 7 router. Let's get that speed test result. And then let's do the final thing, Frontier Network. Let's get the upload and the download speeds. Now, before I show you the results of the test, it's important to note that I didn't kick anybody off the network whilst running these tests. It's not practical because in our homes, we have lots of activity on the network the entire time. Someone could be watching TV, somebody could be playing online computer games, somebody could be watching the security cameras. So to get a real view of Wi-Fi 6 versus Wi-Fi 7, I ran all these tests whilst everything else was going on as normal. This was not held in a sterile lab environment because that's not practical. So I guess there's only one thing left to do. Let's reveal the results and see if it's worth getting Wi-Fi 7 router today. Okay, let's kick off with the internal speed test when I was copying a file to the NAS drive. As you can see, with the Wi-Fi 6 laptop connecting to the Wi-Fi 7 router is faster than the Wi-Fi 6 laptop connecting to the Wi-Fi 6 router. And with the Wi-Fi 7 laptop connecting to the Wi-Fi 7 router, well, there is a massive difference right there. Now, moving on to the external speed test with the Google Drive. On the download speed test, you can see with the Wi-Fi 6 laptop connects to the Wi-Fi 7 router, that is faster than connecting to the Wi-Fi 6 router. And the same applies with the Wi-Fi 7 laptops connecting to the Wi-Fi 7 router. When it comes to the upload speed, once again, you can see when the Wi-Fi 6 laptop connects to the Wi-Fi 7 router, that is significantly faster than connecting to the Wi-Fi 6 router. And when it comes to connecting the Wi-Fi 7 laptop to the Wi-Fi 7 router, once again, a massive difference, much faster in both the download speeds and the upload speeds. Now, turning our attention to the phone speed test where we tested it close and far from the router, I'm going to leave the screen up here. You can pause it and obviously go through it. Um, a couple of just things to note here is the Wi-Fi 6 phone connecting to the Wi-Fi 7 router close to the router was actually a little bit slower than the Wi-Fi 6 phone connecting to the Wi-Fi 6 router. Not by much, but I just thought I'll point that out. But look at this, Wi-Fi 7 phones connecting to the Wi-Fi 6 router or Wi-Fi 7 router. Look at that massive speed close to the router. And when we go further away from the router, well, again, you can see you get better results connecting to a Wi-Fi 7 router. And let's bring it all home with the final test, which was that speed test connecting to that Frontier network. I'm not going to read the entire screen. You can obviously pause it and check it out for yourself. But again, you can see Wi-Fi 6 phones connecting to a Wi-Fi 7 router has got a big difference over a Wi-Fi 6 phone connecting to a Wi-Fi 6 router. And where things really shine is when you have Wi-Fi 7 phones connecting to a Wi-Fi 7 router. Okay, that took a lot of work, but it was well worth it to finally be able to show that there is in fact a real reason to upgrade your router to Wi-Fi 7. You saw that there's a real difference even if you're still using Wi-Fi 6 devices. Okay, I didn't unplug the router, but I have a link to it in the description below that you can check it out and uh, keep your eye on that because there could be some really cool specials coming out. And now that you know what Wi-Fi 7 can do, the question is, does a so-called gaming router make any difference if you're not a gamer? Check that out right over here. Give the video a quick thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.